Okay, here's the data we downloaded. Got Microsoft data here and Kellogg data over here. So let's begin with Microsoft. So what do we have here? Got the date on the first column, the opening price, the highest price during the day, the lowest price and the closing price. And we've got here the adjusted closing price and finally the trade in the volume. Now I'm interested in calculating the returns. So I should be using the adjusted close price because it has been adjusted to take into account any dividend payments and stock splits. So I will simply delete these columns because I don't need them. I don't need this either and focus on the adjusted close price. Now to calculate the monthly returns, take the price in this month, divided by the price in the previous month. This gives you the gross return. To get a net return, subtract one. So let's format this as percentages. and Let's title this column as return. Here we are. These are our monthly returns. Create another variable, which is the calendar month, starting from January 1990, February 1990, and so on. This will be useful when plotting the prices and returns. So I would like to first plot the prices. So here's my line chart. I need to select the data. So these are my prices. The final row is 362. And we've got our axis labels over here. Again, the final row is 362. And here we are. Microsoft. Share prices. Well, what do we observe here? We observe a clear upward trend in the long run. So the prices have gone up in the past 30 years, quite substantially and quite impressively over this period. But clearly it, has, it hasn't been a smooth rise. So if you look more carefully within this overall upward trend, there are quite a few ups and downs. You can see here, over here, over here, and so on. So while the long-term trend is upward, within this long-term long -term trend, there are clear cycles. Let's produce um, another chart, this time uh, with the returns. Let's go to insert again. And again, let's select a line chart. This time, I'm gonna select uh, returns. Want the same axis labels. There they are. And hit OK. Now this is interesting. We can see, so let me get rid of this. You can see quite a bit of action over here. This is Microsoft turns. There's a lot of activity. We, can, we, we see that a lot of high returns, monthly returns, low returns, negative returns, and so on. So as I said, it's although the price has been going up over time, you've got some months with pretty bad returns, right? So here, 
you got minus 34% in March 2000. This is around the time when the Nasdaq bubble burst and Microsoft being a technology company was badly affected. So you can get extremely good months as well. So in December 2000, the company recovered with a 40% return in a single month. Another quite high return, September 2007. A few others here, but pretty low as well. So most of the returns fall within the sort of minus 35 to plus 40% uh, band. But this doesn't mean that more extreme returns won't be observed. It is very well possible that we might get monthly return higher than this or lower than this. Of course, they are not going to be very frequent, but they can still occur. Next, let's look at Kellogg. Just to compare with Microsoft. I'm going to follow the same steps over here. Turns. Okay, take the current month's price divided by the previous month, subtract one, and format as percentage. So here's my monthly return. And let me also create this column with the calendar month for my access labels. So let's insert our first line chart with the prices for Kellogg this time. Okay, almost there. And we here we are. Again, we see a clear upward trend in the long run with quite a few ups and downs along the way. Let's compare it with Microsoft. Upward trends in both cases, but with it's a bumpy ride nonetheless. Let's insert another line chart to look at the returns. Again, I want to compare it with Microsoft. This time I'm selecting the returns. This is done. Access labels. Okay. Done, and here we are. Catalog returns. Let's switch this off. Right, what do we have? Quite a low return here, December 1999, minus 20%. Again, this is around the burst of Nasdaq bubble. And April 2000. I've got minus 13% over here, plus 25% over here. Now compared to Microsoft, the returns for Kellogg are in a tighter band. So they are sort of between minus 20% to plus 25%, right? Minus 20 to 25. For Microsoft, the band is wider, so exceeding 40% on the upside and minus exceeding minus 30% on the downside. So it seems the returns of Microsoft are more volatile. 